Booker Award honors an extraordinary leader, and uh, Janet McNeil is absolutely an extraordinary leader. And when I think of her, um, there are lots of characteristics of leaders that Janet uh, displays and uh, emulates. But there's one that I think is very special for Janet McNeil, and that's, um, we talk about the joy of learning, but for Janet, it was the joy of wonder and the joy of curiosity. And in the professional development opportunities that I experienced her facilitating, I could see Janet just exude that sense of wonder and curiosity that science teachers in grades six, seven, eight would latch onto um, as you know real content specialists. But also I would see teachers latch on to that sense of curiosity and wonder if they were teaching kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade. It was really something that was special about Janet. About a year into her new role as science coordinator, the district embarked on a comprehensive program review of the K-12 science program. Now, a lot of coordinators would kind of view this uh, program review with a little bit of dread and maybe a lot of apprehension, but Janet was unusual in that she totally embraced it. It was really nothing less than an overhaul of K-8 science by bringing it into alignment with st standards and infusing it with um, rich inquiry-based learning and following a logical scope and sequence. As a faculty member at Wheelock, I taught science education and supervised students, many in Brookline. And I saw firsthand the science in the classrooms that was the result of the work done under Janet's leadership. There was a large binder with guidance for teachers, many resources they could use as they saw fit. There were wonderful materials, carefully organized, of course, for good investigative science, and the selection of trade books, beautiful trade books. We also worked together on some of the professional learning activities Janet organized specifically, for in my case, in Science and Literacy Connections. I helped lead these with my colleagues Jeff and Martha Winokur. Janet was there every minute, as much a participant and contributor as leader. And in true Janet leadership style, she, she and some of her teaching college colleagues gradually took over the leadership of these professional development activities. The thing I learned about you early on was how much of a learner you are. You ask questions, you aren't afraid to engage in debate, and you push the thinking of others. All of these qualities make you someone who engages in the process of inquiry. You're a true collaborator, Janet. Thanks for sharing your trailers, new children's books, flying squirrel skeletons, and just for sharing you. And of course, I agree with everything Martha said, but I'd also like to add that it's very fitting that you're receiving the Bob Sperber Award. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Bob years ago after he left Brookline, and he was working with the Boston Higher Education Partnership. And partnership is what our work together has been all about. Uh, our Wheelock students um, don't always see science taught well, except when they're in Brookline. Near and dear to her heart is professional learning for teachers, and that was at a cornerstone of all the, the transformation and changes. She spent hours and hours providing high quality learning experiences for teachers and partnering with teachers, and notably partnering with the BEF. She received many grants and hundreds of teachers were benefited from this and uh, were helped to bring, be able to bring the new kind of science thinking and, and curriculum into Brookline. Um, when she led workshops, she created beautiful materials that were, um, you know, sort of inviting. So she'd create these gorgeous posters and she had all, everything made you want to touch it, right? So she'd have like a, some bird skeletons and some mammal skeletons and she just modeled how she believed and how she'd research what research says science should be taught. and it it made you ask questions and start thinking like a scientist. She was great in putting and bringing teachers together um, to uh, explore new resources and materials, to, um, to think about um, curriculum practices. Um, and then, but then what she did that was really empowering was that she then trusted us as teachers to go off and carry on and make uh, decisions that um, we felt um, 
made sense and was there to to support us um so that trust and 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 that partnership was was uh was amazing and she pushes people in a in a you know in such a supportive way i mean i think sometimes you don't realize that she's kind of pushing you in a particular direction um, which is such a sign of great leadership um, so instead of trying to um, push science in and make room for science she latched on to literacy and how you actually can uh, teach science and learn science through literacy and it was a brilliant leadership move on her part and it's a way she got elementary teachers and middle school teachers involved but what I love about Janet is that she loves literacy so we found a perfect marriage I guess in terms of um, this idea of telling stories of scientists and of pursuits in science uh, and we could, we could work together around that. Um, she was always ready to listen to um, stories and uses with books. I um, pulled this book out, Me Jane, because when this first came out I happened to show it to her and she got all excited. Um, she, it's a beautiful book, it won an award, but she got all excited because she felt she could use this with science journaling and, and modeling some science journaling for younger students. Um, she put it into the curriculum, it worked, uh, it was really terrific and of course we used it in the library. The practices that Janet uh, brought into our district that a lot of us got uh, very excited, but one of them, some of us were like a little skeptical, the science notebook, because you know, it was something that was new, and I just remember she chose her own science notebook that she did over the summer, and all these amazing things that she just recorded there. And we were all like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. So we get it. Uh, then she said, well, why don't you try your own science notebook? So we try our own science notebooks, and then we taught the kids how to do it. One of Janet's uh, real focuses or foci, I guess, with us, it was around argument writing and the need to, to really help students understand how to craft a strong scientific argument. And that emphasis on evidence and the difference between evidence and reasoning, that kids need to, to be gathering their own evidence. And that's, again, through this idea of inquiry and hands-on. So, you know, they, they, they may observe some phenomena and then they ask questions and they, they develop a plan to answer those questions, they collect their data, they think about what they found out. Um, that was huge. Uh, and so that writing piece goes back to, again, this idea of literacy. So that appealed to me as, a, as an ELA person. Um, um, I remember particularly three words with Janet, observe, wonder, and learn. And we use that a lot with students in little science meetings, even in here in the library with kindergartners. Um, and it was just full of inquiry and discovery and curiosity. Last year I said to Jana, I mentioned that my kids were really into worms and next thing I know she brought this whole wonderful um, uh, materials and with the kids we built this warm farm. Uh, let's see if I could dig one for you. Jana, you'll be very pleased to see this. Okay, here they are. <laughs> They're still alive. <laughs> the other really impactful thing for me was Janet's passion for, for her subject area. So when she started talking about science, she would get this little side smile. Um, and it, it happened when, she, when you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, when she came to talk to my graduate students, when she was teaching her own graduate students. I saw her teaching her Simmons students. And it would just sort of like start coming and it was contagious then. Is that she really lives um, a scientific life. And I don't mean a formal, scary, can't pronounce it kind of science-y life, but um, just the, 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 the wonder and awe of everyday life's moments where science could enter in. And so I think about her personal story of science that she would show every year at the beginning of our science and literacy class. And there she was on the beach with her bones and talking to scientists and, and explaining how she started with this wondering, like, what is this? And her whole process of, of um, sort of finding out what was going on and all the people she talked to and all the discoveries she made along the way. And I, I think that that's really inspirational when you have someone who's, who's living what she's asking us to think about inspiring in our students. And so we, we get some of that for ourselves as well from Janet. 
it's just the sheer joy that she takes in science and in the work she does with teachers. Um, she's just, uh, you know, to just watch her light up and just get so delighted when there's, you know, looking through a hand lens or sorting through sand or, um, you know, drawing observations. And she's so delighted to share all this stuff with folks. So Janet's contribution to Brookline really can't be understated to science in particular. Um, I'm really pleased that she's being recognized for this with the Sperber Award. And I say congratulations and uh, thank you for uh, inspiring us. Janet, this is a big hug and congratulations. And congratulations. Congratulations. Well Bye. See ya.